today's video we're finally going to do a proper video with a proper shoot on the Nikon FG but there is going to be a little bit of a caveat so in the last video we completely failed to do a proper shoot with the Nikon FG we went out to the Cotswolds we got a Jaguar we did a really beautiful shoot with every camera but this one it didn't die the battery died why did you break the car Ollie? why did you break the car? I broke the car. So this time I've come out to Florida and I brought this with me. I put some new batteries in it thinking it was going to behave itself. But unfortunately the shutter ring here can unscrew itself and the shutter release, it just fell on the floor. So I picked it up, put it all back together, but I can't activate the shutter like a normal person. I can use a shutter cable release, but I don't have one of them. So I'm going to use a ballpoint pen. I'm going to stick it in here and that'll take a picture for me. So we've come out here to somewhere that I thought was quintessentially American. It's Bakes and Waits Fat Lenny's. I've never actually had a chance to try the food, but the building itself looks really great. And we've got the classic American brand new Mustang to shoot. We've got Jamie as well. So this should be fun if this camera stays working for the next two rolls of film. And cross your legs a little bit. Yeah, you actually fired. <laughs> I just want to say here, I'm taking pictures with a fucking pen. <laughs> a friend of mine found this camera in a small camera shop in Latvia, and I bought it with lens for about 60 pounds. Since then, I've used it for magazines, lockdown projects. It's been around the world with me, but I have really enjoyed using it. The FG was the successor to the Nikon EM camera of 1979 and the predecessor to the Nikon FG20 of 1984. These cameras compose Nikon's first family of ultra-light, compact 35mm SLR camera bodies. Today it represents probably the most budget-friendly option for people looking for a Nikon film camera, as it takes the same film and uses the same lenses as the more expensive options. It effectively takes the same pictures, though, in terms of features and build quality, it has nothing on the bigger Nikons at the time. What attracted me to this camera most was its extremely compact size, which made it great for traveling with. I really want to say nice things about Nikon cameras because the lenses I really like. But when it comes to 35mm cameras, sort of vintage ones, they're either big, heavy things, and they're really robust, like the F2 and the F1, or they're really fragile, temperamental beasts, like the FM, the FM2, and the FG. So that's the first roll. There was a roll of black and white in it for uh, getting married, which I have now shot. So I'm gonna put a roll of Portrait 800 in it. I'm gonna push it a stop to 1600, and all these colors should really pop. Oh god, I've got to get this one wound on. Oh no. The light meter's gone as well. Oh, you have your actual light meter. I might have to use a real one. No guys, I'm going to use Sunny 16 like you will tell me to. <laughs> Is there a dark neon sunset 16? 2.8 or 60th, I reckon I can get away with that. Because shooting with a pen at a thirtieth of a second, it's like, duh, duh. it's going to be really blurry. I've got my little aperture lamp. I'm going to come back and get like the open side. So after all that fuss, I really like the end result. I might have got more out of the whole shoot if I wasn't fighting the camera, but I still like what we got. It's a great little camera. 
It's small, uh, it's not particularly fancy, it's very much overlooked, it's not particularly reliable, but I think that applies to all of the smaller Nikons. Um, when it's working, it's fantastic. When it's not, it's a pain in the ass. So if you like this video, like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.